Welcome to the Seventh Planet Broadcasting special series, The Anunnaki, for Season 1, Episode 2. I am your host, Matt LaCroix. Take a journey with us into the jungles of Mesoamerica and review the evidence left behind for who the great gods and mystical kings of the Maya and Aztec cultures really were. I am joined by best-selling author and radio personality, Gerald Clark, and truth seeker and ancient ancestral researcher, Zechariah Lang. Together, we'll delve into the compelling evidence left behind in Mesoamerica that supports the ancient alien hypothesis connecting the bygone races of Mexico to both Egypt and Atlantis. Could the Anunnaki have taken part in creating high civilization in Mexico? Is there now conclusive evidence to show geographical cross-cultural connections between the American and African continents? Maybe the forgotten pyramids of Mesoamerica hold the answers. Scattered throughout the dense rainforests and rugged mountains of Mexico are megalithic pyramids and temple complexes. Many of the ancient sites were built using complex architectural designs aligned with the solstice, equinox, and cardinal points precisely formed to track zodiacal time around the Earth's processional wheel. Perhaps we need to look at the Maya and Aztec cultures in a new light and see where the evidence takes us. Many are familiar with Hollywood's portrayal of lost treasure seekers like Indiana Jones, but this isn't a fantasy movie. Our goal together is to uncover the real story using mounting evidence left behind by the Olmec, Toltec, Maya, and Aztec races. Found hidden among the crumbling ruins of forgotten cities in the Yucatan and Guatemala, inscriptions and sculptures showing tall serpent gods and deities have dominated the culture for thousands of years. Who exactly were the Mayan and Aztec gods? Were they symbolic entities or real flesh and blood beings, perhaps ancient astronauts from another star system? The Mayan god Kukul Khan and the Aztec god Quetzalcoatl appear all over Mesoamerica, often representing a winged serpent or flying dragon. What do these cultures say about them and could there perhaps be similarities between these gods? When exploring the Olmec culture, we find giant stone heads carved with very clear negroidal facial features. Hieroglyph samples and precious metal mining by the Olmec provide probable links with West African origins, specifically the Mandinga culture that occupied the area along the Niger River. According to many ancient writings, the being known as Thoth or Ningshida left Africa in approximately 3114 BC, bringing Ethiopian stone workers with him. Could these be what are known as the Olmec people? The Izapa Pyramid site in Tapachula, Mexico is situated on the Pacific coast bordering Guatemala. The ancient site houses a large stone termed Stella V, that provides significant evidence for cultural sharing between the Olmec and Maya. The stone edifice was inscribed during the early and middle pre-classic Olmec era. The Izapa style, as it was called, was adopted by Mayan artists. The stela depicts the bearded god Quetzalcoatl, conveying the genesis of the humanity myth with the Tree of Life, Egyptian pharaohs, and what appears to be the Nile River. Could this Izapa creation myth connect our search back to other stories involving ancient astronauts from Sumer and Egypt? Throughout the Olmec and Mayan cultures, we see evidence of strange carvings showing what look like elephants. The problem is that there were no elephants in North or South America only in Africa, where they originally came from. How can this be if there was no cultural transfer via the Olmecs from the African continent? 
One of the best examples showing evidence of ancient elephants in Mesoamerica can be found in Copan, Honduras. In Copan, we find a series of statues commemorating kings and gods. One of the statues in particular, known as Stella B, shows a striking resemblance to that of an African elephant. At the top of the statue shows what looks like two elephant heads with trunks coming down. How could these isolated cultures have known about an animal that only lived halfway across the world? The Yucatan of Mexico was broken up into four major regions of the great Mayan empire. We can see Calakmo in the north, Tikal to the east, Copan to the south, and Palenque representing their western domain. To the north, on the Mexican highlands, the Aztec established themselves as a warring culture and engulfed the area in turmoil. The Olmec, the Toltec, and finally the Aztec occupied Talan, which served as a model for the construction of Teotihuacan, the place of white cloud serpent. The Aztec eventually left Teotihuacan by order of the gods to locate a place where an eagle clutched a serpent poised on a cactus growing from a rock in the midst of a lagoon. The Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan, which is today's Mexico City. Tenochtitlan was destroyed by Cortes where they built on the tops of the ruins of Mexico City. Te Teotihuacan was the central location of the Aztec and most important city for the god known as Quetzalcoatl. Located at the edge of the Timbala Mountains, deep in the rainforest of the state of Chiapas, Mexico, lies the spectacular Mayan city of Palenque. Palenque represents the Western territory of the Mayan domain. In 1952, an important discovery was made at the Temple of Inscriptions, where the first preserved Mayan king, known as Lord Pacal, was found deep below collapsed tunnels. With only around 10% of the site excavated so far, there is no telling what other tombs and relics still remain. I visited Palenque in 2015 with my wife, Krista. The site is located at the geographic center of Mexico's landmass, where an important discovery at the Temple of Inscriptions led to a final decoding of the Mayan language. We're at Palenque and we're going to investigate the Temple of Inscriptions and several other sites here. Very, very impressive place. It's impressive because this is one of the few archaeological sites where they found a body who was a king, and we're able to use that, the inscriptions off of the sarcophagus stone to figure out what the Mayan Codex really was saying, and they learned the history of the kings here, and that was a, a seminal point in decoding the Mayan Codex, so that's why this place is so important. And the real question is, who was Lord Pacal? Wow. In Palenque, we find some of the most important evidence we have for understanding the complex Mayan language. The great king, known as Lord Pacal, was found entombed beneath the Temple of Inscriptions in a sarcophagus. Inscribed on the massive sarcophagus lid were vital clues to who the dynasty kings were, along with their birth and rulership durations, which felicitated deciphering the Mayan symbols and glyphs. The sarcophagus cover also shows Lord Pacal operating some sort of rocket ship or telescope to view or traverse the heavens. It's hard not to have more questions when seeing this impressive record in stone. That leads us to the big question of who was Lord Pacal. Did Lord Pacal have a genetic connection to gods like Quetzalcoatl? Or could he have been one himself? 
We know from his sarcophagus lid that he had an advanced understanding of the laws of reality and showed technology that seemed to be far beyond from the stars. Lord Pakal ruled the Palenque region for an astounding 68 years, far beyond the average Mayan lifespan from that time period. Considering Lord Pakal's long life and otherworldly knowledge, one must ask whether he could have been a wizard king or a god himself. Tikal is another stunning Mayan city located in the southern Yucatan Peninsula, surrounded by dense jungle. Here, we find some of the most important Mayan artifacts depicting possible evidence for an ancient astronaut extraterrestrial connection. Looking at the various statues and inscriptions found at Tikal, we see compelling symbolism that appears to depict ancient astronauts in their spacesuits. The statue figures appear to be wearing enclosed full-faced helmets equipped with breathing apparatus. Could this be further evidence of past ancient astronaut visitation from extraterrestrial origins? The sheer volume of artifacts being unearthed from Tikal is just now being fully recognized for their importance to the Mayan culture. Countless alien-looking statues and carvings unearthed there leaves most mainstream archaeologists scratching their heads in confusion. It's time to follow the evidence wherever it leads and discover the truth behind the incredible Mayan culture. Chichen Itza is located in the northern part of the Yucatan Peninsula and is arguably one of the best known sites of the Maya and the most visited. I was able to visit the Mayan temple in 2010. It's an absolutely stunning location. Being there and walking the pathways used by the ancient Mayan race feels like stepping back into bygone times. Among the complex structures at Chichen Itza, we find clear evidence for what appears to be a large observatory used primarily for tracking the planet Venus. Perhaps Mayan astronomers were using observatories to keep track of galactic time. Could their affinity for monitoring the heavens be related to the Mayan long count and their Zulkan calendar? Chichen Itza houses one of the most famous step pyramid temples dedicated to the Mayan god Kukulkan, the plumbed serpent. The famous El Castillo Pyramid is uniquely designed with nine levels and 52 panels per side. The number of steps adds up to 365, counting to the top. Could the pyramid architecture represent levels of consciousness in the Zolkan calendar ending with universal consciousness? The incredible temple of El Castillo is precisely aligned in such a way that in the spring and fall equinox, the sun casts a shadow on the stairs leading down to the serpent's heads, which gives the illusion of a snake descending from the heavens. This celebration of the sun and moon can be seen all over the Mayan and Aztec cultures and shows their close relationship to the movement of the stars. Could the symbolism of the celestial dragon be the motivation for the Mayan God's choice to be portrayed as a winged serpent? If so, why? The incredible Aztec city of Teotihuacan contains one of the largest pyramids in the world. The base of the Pyramid of the Sun is as wide as the Great Pyramid of Giza. We are talking about tremendous structures with advanced craftsmanship. The Pyramid of the Sun at Teotihuacan used the royal cubit as its unit of measurement, the same as seen at Giza in Egypt. Does this mean that even though they were separated by thousands of miles in a great ocean, they could have possibly had the same architect? I visited the site in 2015, seeking evidence that connected the ancient races of Mexico to the Anunnaki gods. What I discovered at Teotihuacan showed clear symbolic and historic connections to the ancient gods of Mesopotamia and Egypt. How could Quetzalcoatl arbitrarily affiliate himself with the number 52 in Mexico, given we know it was Thoth's number in Egypt? Is this just a coincidence? 
So this next picture uh, is a map to show uh, some drawings that came out of one of the early codices talking about the migration path of the Aztecs. And the reason uh, I'm, I'm interested in this is because uh, there were discussions about the Aztecs coming from the north, so you have to ask yourself, well, how far to the north was it? Uh, up in North America, so the information on the history of the ancient sites in Mexico are available through oral traditions, some, through some of the indigenous tribes, and various books called codices. The Borturini Codex specifies that the ancestral home of the Aztec tribe was called Atzlan, which means white place. There existed the home of the source couple, or gods if you will, that begat the Aztec race. It's talked Mixquatl, meaning white cloud serpent, and his wife, Elan Q, which means old woman, gave birth to sons, there were four of them, that appear to be the source of the Nahuatl language. This includes the Aztecs and the Toltecs, the ones we're going to focus on, and they were descended from Itztoc Mixquatl. The mother of the Toltecs was different than the mother for the Aztecs, and thus the Toltecs and Aztecs were considered half-brothers. Teotihuacan lured kings that ruled and died at the site. Burial at Teotihuacan was equivalent to those in Egypt. Doing so ensured joining the gods in the afterlife. The Toltecs left first and built the city of Tolan a short distance away. The Aztecs were the last to leave the site. Their leader at the time of the migration was named Mexitli, which means the anointed. It is believed that the Aztec god Huitzilpochtli promised the people a new land filled with houses of gold and silver, with multicolored clothing and decorative hues. As the story goes, they were told to keep going in the indicated direction, uh, which would be southwest toward Mexico City, until finding an eagle perched on a cactus growing from a rock surrounded by water. Their directions were to settle the site and call themselves Mexica, which kind of occluded the name of uh, Aztec a chosen people to rule over all other tribes. The site was Tenochtitlan, now Mexico City, and a lot of people believe that the Mexico were the source race of those seven tribes that the state of Mexico was named after. So according to the friar who uh, did these writings, the tribes had with him four wise men to guide and lead them and also carried along manuscripts and calendar knowledge. Some of the tribes migrated to the location of Cloud Serpent, while others chose alternative paths dispersing the original seven tribes of Atzlan. The Aztecs and Toltecs eventually reached the site of Teotihuacan. Scholars generally believe that the Teotihuacan site was built by the Mexica circa AD 1325, but that the migrants first landed in the area of Mexico Valley around 1140 AD. The Emerald Tablets were discovered beneath a pyramid of the sun, according to Dr. Doriel, circa 1925, who subsequently translated the text. The Brotherhood of the White Temple published the findings several years later. Many still consider these forgotten tablets to be some of the most important writings of mankind. The emerald tablets are made of a bright, green, hermetic, crystalline material, which is purportedly indestructible. The author, Thoth the Atlantean, created a record of his wisdom that would remain for all time. Why would the tablets of Atlantean origin be hidden beneath a Mesoamerican pyramid of the sun? Could Thoth have been involved in leading the Olmec stone workers from Africa to Veracruz, Mexico, establishing the long count inherited by the Mayan priests? When reading the Atlantean wisdom inscribed on the emerald tablets, one realizes why they are so important. Thoth's models provide an advanced understanding of the holographic framework of reality. From explaining the visible light spectrum and frequency within the human brain, to mankind's lost connections to the stars. The encoded wisdom is the basis for the mystery school teachings. When compared with other writings, like the Book of Enoch or Poimandres, we see many similarities. Could they perhaps have been written by the same author? The Emerald Tablet Holographic Universe Model provided by Thoth discusses nine parallel dimensions in one dimension of time. 
Modern string theory states the same conclusion mathematically. The more we learn about ancient history, the more we realize that we could just now be sophisticated enough to understand what the ancients already knew thousands of years before us. If we want to understand what the Mayans knew long ago, we must decipher the significance of the numerology they used for tracking time. The most important number to the Maya for tracking time was 52. The year one read and birth date of Quetzalcoatl. This important number was regarded as sacred to both the Maya and the Aztec in affiliation with the calendar, as was the case in Mesopotamia. You can see that there are 52 weeks in the Near Eastern calendar. This requires a seven day week derived from the four moon phases. The important number 260 is found by multiplying 52 times five. The number 260 became the Tolkien division scholar and helped decipher just how the Mayans tracked time and designed their calendar. Cracking the Mayan code led to understanding the important Mayan calendar and how they perceived time. Ian Lundgold was a famous researcher who developed a way to read and decipher the Mayan calendar and relate it to our Julian calendar. Based on his findings, we're able to piece together a complex view of where we fit at the particular stage in our development. You could call it a nine-stage frequency, dispensation, and consciousness roadmap. The Mayan Zogan calendar depicts the different cycles of life and levels of consciousness. We see that each stage represents its specific time period and the various stages of social and technological evolution possible. Was this the reason for the importance of the Mayan long count date of August 13th, 3113 BC? The Maya gained their understanding of the various levels of conscious evolution by understanding the importance of what is known as the Dark Rift. In Mayan, it is called Shibalba Bay, meaning the road to the underworld. Passing through this rift in space represents a changing of energy and what frequency will dominate that specific time period. We have to remember that our solar system is in a constant state of motion, as are all the galaxies around us. As the Earth passes into this area known as the galactic center, the heightened energy is postulated to lead to higher states of consciousness. Could we be experiencing universal consciousness now in accordance with our solar system passing through the energetic band as predicted by the Maya? It seems as if we are just catching up to what the Maya and others knew long before us. Given the changes we are witnessing in the world today, could our headlines be explained by this arrival at the processional great year as we pass from Pisces into the age of Aquarius? History is replete with ancient civilizations and their claimed connection to the gods, descending from the heavens and imparting divine knowledge. The important question remains, who provided that knowledge and where did they acquire it? Join us for the next Anunnaki series, season one episode, where evidence is examined linking Noah's alien birth, the wanderings of Cain in the land of Nod, and Methuselah's search for his father Enoch living among the gods.